At 6 a.m., let's start things off with some breaking traffic news. Right now, we're taking a live look at I-90. This is right in between that Thor Freya exit and just past there, actually, where you can see cars are backed up for a quite a while right now. And this is all because of the deadly head on crash. Again, this is right near that Thor Freya exit right there. Yeah, and uh, for a while it looked like traffic was moving OK off of that Altamont Street exit. But of course, as the morning commute picks up, it looks like traffic almost at a standstill as cars try to merge over to get to that exit. So keep that in mind. Washington State Patrol says there was a deadly two car head on crash while you were sleeping. This morning, Krem 2's Brandon T. Jones is live near that crash with new information for us from Washington State Patrol. Good morning, Brandon. Yeah, good morning, Tim Channing. And actually, we've been getting a lot of helpful information from Sergeant Greg Rydell here with the Washington State Patrol. And so he's standing by live with us right now. And we got, you know, some information that you've been, you know, helping us out with this morning. But what can you tell us happened here um, off of I-90 westbound? So about 2.36 this morning, we got a call of a wrong way vehicle. Um, we don't actually know where they entered the freeway. We're thinking in the downtown area because a short time later, we had the report that it was involved in a head on collision. Unfortunately, uh, that driver that was driving the wrong way, a female driver was uh, killed in the collision and the victim driver driving westbound in the, the westbound lanes were was also uh, killed in the, the collision. So yeah, yeah, pretty tragic morning. Uh, it's backed up traffic as well and impacting a, a lot of people and our, our hearts go out to the families that have lost somebody today. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. And then so, yeah, as the morning kind of progresses, uh, how is the traffic being uh, detoured? So the traffic is being exited at Altamont. We should have the road open here in, in within minutes. Okay. Um, so the tows are just uh, finishing up, hooking up the vehicles, and uh, we'll have the freeway back open. Okay, so not too much longer, um, but in the meantime, is there any other particular routes or anything that people I, should know? I about? would just try to avoid I-90. Keep yeah. in mind that we've had some people down here at 2nd and 5th uh, attempting to come the wrong way up the ramp, mm -hmm. which the whole reason we're here today is because someone was driving the wrong way. So keep in mind that it's not worth it. Yeah driving the wrong way let's let's make sure that we're exiting the freeways properly and uh, being safe out there yes sir and then the last question I've got for you is that you know with this being a two car accident and you know and resulting in the two fatalities how long does an investigation like this take place so typically it can take two to four hours um, this this collision because both drivers were deceased it's um, there's there's not a lot of evidence other than the scene uh, so this was processed within about two and a half hours. Yes, sir. All right, Sergeant Rydell, right. we Thank appreciate you, you. Thank you, you for the information. And uh, we'll stay out here and keep you all updated as well. And as Sergeant Rydell said, the roads should be open here pretty soon. And so we'll stand by and uh, keep you updated. But thank you again. And uh, we'll toss it back to you all in the studio. Now, in case you miss part of what the sergeant said, they are working to clear out some of those cars right now and hope to have those lanes open in just a matter of minutes. But this is a look at I-90 and Havana just past that exit. And we're talking about that backup right now. You can see traffic at a complete standstill right now. Again, they are trying to get those cars moved out of the way so that traffic can continue moving along smoothly. We'll continue checking in on traffic conditions all this morning here on Up With Crim. Time is now 604 as we take a look at our weather forecast where this morning is quite cold outside due to the clear skies that we had during the overnight hours. And for the first time this year, we've seen freeze warnings issued for Spokane and Coeur d'Alene as temperatures have gotten pretty close to about 30 degrees. Now Spokane has fared a little bit better at 37 for the current low, but it is quite a bit colder over Coeur d'Alene as you see 29 for the current temperature, also 29 to 33 degrees for some areas in central Washington. So those freeze warnings, including all those areas and then just pushing it in between through Spokane County, even though that the airport observation is still above the freezing mark. We're mostly sunny this morning. That does warm us up quickly. In fact, today will be a bit warmer overall at 63 degrees for the high temperature. Only rain chances today would be across northern Washington. Overnight, police in L.A. began dismantling an encampment of pro-Palestinian protesters on UCLA's campus. Now, this comes after a night of violence between demonstrators and counter-protesters. This morning, an investigation is now underway after witnesses say police did not intervene, seemingly letting the two sides fight it out. 
The university is saying at least 15 people were hurt in the fights and at least one went to a hospital. But police who were there say the number is much higher. A UCLA senior got 14 staples in his head after he was hit with a traffic cone and beaten with a stick. Police did not step in to calm the unrest for nearly two hours. I thought the police would be our saving rescue. Instead, what ended up happening was we saw the police forming in a large group outside, seemingly watching the events unfold. California Governor Gavin Newsom called the response delayed and unacceptable. What's your name? UCLA says classes will be held remotely today and Friday with employees also encouraged to work from home. Yesterday, more than 100 students and staff protested on Gonzaga's campus. Now, the peaceful protest started in the middle of campus and led to College Hall. Organizers called on the university to disclose their investment portfolio and study abroad programs in Israel and cut all ties with companies that support Israel. It was less about spreading awareness because people are aware at this point, and it was more about getting them actually to take concrete action that can spark real change in Palestine. Gonzaga University released a response to their demand, saying in part, the administration will share these requests with the university's board of trustees and investment committee. Now, face away from me, you're going to start walking backwards. New video showing the moment a teenager was arrested for allegedly firing a gun near Chief Gary Park on Tuesday night. 18-year-old Hunter Simmons is one of two people who police say fired shots at the busy park. Now, police aren't naming the other suspect because he's a minor. This all happened during a Little League baseball game, and thankfully, no one was injured. Now, Simmons appeared in court yesterday, facing charges on a drive-by shooting. Police say that an argument broke out among a group of people on the southwest side of the park, and that's when police say the two suspects drove up and started shooting. Officers were then able to track them down and arrest them both. It is just about 6.08 here. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. Two UW football players charged with attacking a bicyclist will appear in court today. Tylen Rogers, also known as Tybo, and Diesel Gordon both face misdemeanor assault charges. Police say they were able to identify the teammates because the attack was all caught on surveillance video. UW says both players are currently suspended from the team. Tracking today, Brian Koberger is also expected back in court for a hearing in a matter of hours. He's the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students back in 2022. Today's hearing will decide if a future hearing on whether the trial will stay in Latok County will remain open to the public. The hearing starts at 10 o'clock this morning. You can watch it live on our website, creme.com. This morning, the Coeur d'Alene Fire Department is asking for information on a house fire they believe was arson. This happened on Tuesday night on Centennial Place. The initial investigation shows the fire was likely set intentionally. The Idaho State Fire Marshal is now offering a $5,000 reward for any information on who might have set that fire. Call the number there on your screen if you have any information. That is a look at your morning rush. We have nearly perfectly clear skies overhead as of this Thursday morning. Just enjoying that early morning sunshine, hoping to warm us up just as quickly. I can definitely see my breath as I'm talking to you right now. But we'll show you the satellite and Doppler radar combination. It sees two storm systems, one to our east and over Montana, where there is snow over this region near Great Falls. It's also seen another storm system that's near Portland, where heavy rain was falling this morning. We kind of find ourselves in a nice sweet spot of clear skies in between. In fact, there's a little area of high pressure over central Idaho that's just given us a bit more of a stable weather pattern for today. So that sunshine does win out for most of the day. She warm us up into the 60s for the first time this week. There are rain chances, but only across the northern Washington mountains for today. Outside of that, a far sunnier and far warmer and pleasant forecast for today. Tomorrow, most of the day Saturday. Unfortunately, it does not last all the way until Bloomsday on Sunday. So we'll have the latest weather update for this weekend's forecast in a few moments.